welcome to another Keel Hall Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend of sailing. I myself had a lot of fun doing some different voyages and getting into a lot of trouble with other sailors. We're going to be covering a lot this week. Some stuff happened as far as the patch, and we got a trailer for The Hungering Deep and a date. More to come. All right, just a quick update with what happened this week. We didn't have any entries outside of Bodhi Slam for the Beautiful Wilds contest that ended on the 19th, so I guess I'll have to give him the code. Uh, and the Armament J contest is still active. First up with today's docket, we got a small developer update on Tuesday of last week from senior producer Drew Stevens. He covered the patch notes in a small video talking about some of the issues brought on with the patch. If you didn't play much on Tuesday, Wednesday for our Pirates Down Under, then you saved yourself a trip to Neverland. Uh, while the patch offered us the previously mentioned closed and open cruise, hidden name tags underwater for enemies, enemies and improved payouts for higher level voyages, uh, we also got the opportunity to share resources. Well, for a short time at least. Not long after the patch was released, there was a storm of Almond Beard errors to the point where they had actually had to disable all of the features in the patch. Now, the, the actual patch notes, the bug fixes, those stayed in, but as far as the actual features go, they actually had to disable those uh, and try and bring them back slowly over the course of a couple days. So, much like many other pirates looking to set sail on the new patch, I hopped on Tuesday for my regular stream and joined up with some of our regulars uh, to go kill some skeletons. The The night was pretty uneventful as we were grinding through Order of Souls quests. Uh, we had about four villainous and a bunch of other stuff, probably around like 3k worth. And as we headed to Shipwreck Bay, we hit a wave which tilted the bow up and it just, it didn't stop. It just kept going. And I started noticing we were heading up into the air. And when I looked behind me, I saw that the sea was getting further away. I had that sinking feeling that, you know, when you're about to just almond beard. Yeah, that, that seconds later, everything just went black and all the loot that we had just kind of disappeared. So that was fun. But you know, we tried a couple more times that night and had similar results. Uh, after a couple hours, I just decided I needed to call it. I, I needed to, to just kind of wait for to hear from Rare uh, when when the issues would be fixed because they had they had actually by the next day fixed uh, the issues and the features had been reinstated. And the almond beer errors weren't really an issue after that. So they'd kind of done some maintenance throughout the day, kind of taking the servers down and kind of bringing them back up. There were definitely a couple times where I had missed out on some loot, not not as a result of the almond beard, but just as a result of running out of time to turn stuff in. So the only drawback was that they had to keep um, the resource sharing feature turned off. That small thing that they announced was going to be in the patch that one of their engineers had developed, that feature is still turned off. So you still can't share resources uh, with other pirates, which that's fine. That was a small thing. It wasn't, it's it's not like a quality of fix like closed and open crews. So I can wait on that. That's fine. But I have a feeling that eventually they will bring that back. It's just a matter of whether or not it will be something that they decide to postpone past the hungering deep, which I'm going to be talking about a lot later. So uh, stay tuned for, for kind of going into that. So this kind of brings up something that I talked about on the Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, I had done a poll and I wanted to know how many people felt like they should be doing a public test server. And this is something that I've, I'm used to with other games and, and it actually does help quite a bit. Um, the, the few people that do actually go onto it, they do a lot of testing to make sure that there aren't game-breaking bugs in the patch. Uh, to make sure that when it does go live, you're not running into these problems like we had with the, the patch breaking because of the sharing resources underwater would cause the game to crash. And they had to turn off all the features and kind of troubleshoot a lot of these issues. And 
just from the small amount of people that that uh, voted on my poll on Twitter, they all decided that they, or a majority of them, did say that they would much rather be spoiled for stuff that's coming, knowing that the patch, when it actually did drop, would be a lot more stable, so that when they log on to to kind of get into the new content, that they wouldn't be losing progress because of errors that show up that aren't really kind of foreseen in internal testing uh, that you that when you expose it to hundreds of thousands of people, you get a lot more information a lot quicker with those player test ra- or those public test rounds. So I would love to see Rare implement this. I don't know how hard it is to implement this, but if eventually we're able to start testing out the content before it's released, I know it takes a lot away from the whole mystery and the build up to content dropping and what they want people to see for the first time, but Not being able to see it because server issues are happening and clients are crashing is even worse than getting a little bit of a taste before it's actually released. All right, next up on today's docket, if you're listening to this on Monday the 21st, there is still time for you to buy the eight items being removed for the game on Tuesday the 22nd with the next patch. If you're not sure what those items were, these were the tag names given to them. It was the Scurvy Bilge Rat, Castaway Bilge Rat, the Grand Admiral, and the Ruffian Sea Dog. And it was the Cutlass and Figureheads for those names. So you're not, you're probably not going to be able to get all of them right now. And they are being taken out of the game. But the difference is that many many of these items are going to be reworked and will hopefully be more interesting when they are reintroduced. Now, when we found out about this, we had about 10 days of time between when they announced it and we got the list and when they're actually going to be removing them. And one of my sailing partners, Bodhi Slam, last week, he took the challenge of actually trying to collect all of these items. Now, if you don't know, these items are over 4,000 gold worth of items, especially the figureheads. Uh, so not many people are going to have these. And while they are still kind of hard to distinguish compared to the original versions, it will be kind of a nice nod to anyone who has these later in the game's life. So for the majority of his grind for the gold, he actually worked solo doing Merchant Alliance quests since the items have set price ranges and you kind of know how much you're getting. It was easier for him to actually maximize his time by only working on what would get him the most gold. All right. Usually I'm going to save the reviews for last, but this actually is relevant. So I got a review from Clail, I believe is how you pronounce it. It says, I love to hear your opinion on content updates. Try to include more stories of your encounters on the Sea of Thieves. Thanks, Clail, for the five-star review, and you guys are going to get a little story right now. So, next up on today's docket, my tales of Sea of Thieves. So, later in the week, we sailed together uh, and had a great time sailing around, less stressed about getting the most gold. So, not long after starting up a galleon, myself... CJ from the Player One Podcast and Killer SRT8. Uh, Shortly after we had started the Galleon, Bodhi Slam joined in thanks to the new closed crew option. Now, having a closed crew is really amazing, by the way. It's it's such a wonderful feeling knowing that I can always play. And if people see me online and can join, I will have friends pop in to help out. It's it's the same feeling of running into someone you know out in the world, like, oh. Hey, I didn't know you were going to be here. It's great to see you. I really look forward to the day when we can actually start being able to do this dynamically so that when when, when you're actually starting a sloop, you can start a solo sloop. And, a, and as people join you, it will allow you to change up from a sloop to a galleon and then possibly even something larger in the future if that's the way Sea of Thieves wants to go with the bigger ships. But it's going to be great for us to be able to take up to two people for a sloop and then dynamically change into a galleon, which they did say was something that they're trying to work on. So Anyway, so we're sailing around, digging up treasure, wondering if there will be a, a skull cloud soon because it hadn't popped in a while. So but not long after, we were down at Crook's Hollow uh, digging up some treasure for a gold hoarder's mission, and a skull cloud popped up 
right in front of me. I was on the ship, but I was waiting for them, and I was just kind of sailing the ship around the backside on the, the eastern side so that they'd be able to kind of get to the ship sooner because uh, that was where a majority of the actual treasure was buried. And I kid you not, as soon as I got to the backside, a skull cloud actually popped up right in front of me, right at Crow's Nest Fort. So we totally ditched the last chest and we sailed the short distance to the fort. We came in so hot, we actually just dropped anchor. We didn't even bother with the, the raising the sails. We just lined it up so we were going straight and then dropped anchor as soon as we got past the uh, cannon towers just to make sure that we were trying to reduce as much damage from our ship as we, we possibly could possibly could take. Uh, we made pretty quick work of the fort, but even with the three people working on the fort and one out uh, on the ship as a lookout, we barely made it to the captain before this galleon was almost on top of us. Now, this galleon had uh, been out by Plunder's outpost, and we kind of saw them coming towards us, and, and uh, CJ did a really good job of keeping us informed as we're trying to, like, burn through these waves of skeletons. And you, if you've ever done a fort, you know it's hard to always discern, like, where they're coming from, what kind they are, is it going to be worth using a powder keg or not? So we had we had literally killed the captain and grabbed the key just in time to, to run out, jump into the ocean, and just just as I grabbed the ladder, I told them, and they just they they dropped the sails, and we started the sail away, and it was it was so hilarious because had it been any longer if we'd gotten a different kind of wave maybe or or if someone had died and we couldn't kill the 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 skeletons fast enough they literally would have rammed us we there was no chance that we were uh are gonna survive this because we were so focused on trying to kill this this captain at the time so the galleon um uh, we, we grabbed the key. We got on the ship. The galleon, we found out, was actually home to two pirate legends uh, fairly deep in Athena's rep, uh, Athena, Athena's fortune rep. So they had the ghostly garbs on. Uh, so And for some reason, I, I don't know why, but a lot of pirate legends seem to really love wearing the Athena rep gear. So they, they kind of like, when they're trying to board, they kind of like try and bolster their, their morale by, be, yeah, I'm a pirate legend. Look at me. You can tell. And I'm like, yeah, that's nice. So we we sailed west knowing that they were going to follow us and try and fight us. And, and they managed to get uh, onto our ship a couple times, actually. Um, in fact, there were a few encounters where they had actually managed to drop our anchor and kill a few of us. And this was this was actually kind of frightening because uh, every time that they and there was a sloop in the in the distance, too, they were actually kind of buttoning in on this, too. So they wanted part of the action. They knew that we had the key as well. But. Thankfully, each time we had killed the people on board and gotten our anchor up. But during this, there the the sloop that had been determined to sink at least one of us, uh, I had gotten knocked off by one of them, and uh, I tried boarding them once and and only once because the one time that I got onto their ship, I was immediately spit on by snakes. And then I immediately took a blunderbuss shot to the face uh, before I could even get to their anchor. So I kind of decided I was going to avoid the sloop after doing that. So um, at one point, the two pirate legends had boarded our ship and taken on our crew. Uh, they, they'd taken, off, taken out our crew, and I had actually been blown off earlier by a cannonball. I was trying to, I can't even remember what I was trying to do, but I was running around the ship probably trying to do something like watch ladders or something, and a cannonball had, had thrown me off. So my crew had managed to kill them, but for some, something happened, and, and the three of them were dead. Our anchor was dropped, and we were sitting ducks, and this sucked so much because I'm in the middle of the water. I'm too close to the ship for a mermaid to spawn, and, I'm, and, I, and I can't swim back fast enough uh, to, to prevent them from doing something while the other galleon is slowly starting to come up along our, our, our uh, stern, and, and just they were, they were going to take us out at that point, and it was, it was pretty much done for. So I managed to swim to the other galleon, and I managed to get on board, drop their anchor, and then I probably spent another, oh god, it felt like forever, but it was probably only like 30 seconds, but I, I wasted enough of their time kill, trying to try, for them trying to kill me and me trying to kill the people that were trying to raise the anchor that my crew finally got back from the Ferry of the Damned, got the anchor up, and we continued westward. So 
we we were hunted by this galleon going from the crow's nest all the way over to Plunder Valley and back up to Cro Crook's Hollow and eventually down to Ancient Spire Outpost uh, when we ran back into the sloop and they started fighting us again. At one point, we had taken so much damage and everyone else was dead, I was bailing water out of the ship to keep it from getting up to the mid-deck because the mid-deck the mid deck looked like Swiss cheese. And I knew as soon as it got above the mid-deck, we were drowned. That was it. We were going to lose everything. I had buried the key deep in the bottom of the ship and there was no way they were going to find it on their own. But I knew if one bucket at a time, I just had to stall. I just had to try and get the water out fast enough so that my, my crewmates could... Come Come back to life and help me out, and they did. They got back down in there, and I just kept, I just kept going bucket after bucket, trying to get the water out. So after, after nearly dying to that, we had survived that. We were, we started heading uh, any way that the wind could possibly actually save us. So we started heading uh, in in the northern direction towards the wilds. And I know you're thinking like, oh, great, the wilds. Everyone hates the wilds. So we started sailing and we started to notice that the, that the, the sloop that was chasing after us started harassing the other galleon. So we were trying to take that to our advantage as well, too. So every time we noticed that they were trying to actually follow us or try and get a ahead of us or or kind of gauge whether or not we were going in one direction we would immediately throw the wheel the other direction flip the sails and try and catch the wind and we were tacking back and forth to the point where they couldn't keep up to notice like when we were actually making our changes and we actually managed to get out of view of the galleon and the sloop and we ended up heading all the way northwest to sanctuary outpost where we refitted and changed clothings we changed the color of our ships we changed everything tight we changed our, our peg legs and our hooks. We look like a completely different ship with a different crew everything so we ended up we ended up staying there and, I, and i'm going to finish this up uh we ended up going and doing a couple other gold hoarder missions and one that had actually sent us back down into the ancient isles which was nice because we could slowly kind of island hop our way down testing to see who is out there still looking for us and as soon as we started getting close to chicken isle we started to notice that there was a galleon hunting another galleon and they were chasing them all the way out to uh, uh discovery ridge and as soon as as soon as they passed us, one guy shot over to check and see who we were. And he didn't make it onto a ship. He didn't make it close enough to grab the ladder. And we were ready. We didn't know. We didn't want to fire on them. We didn't want to. We, we turned our lights on, for, for gosh sakes. Uh, we, we just wanted them to see what we were going to do. We were going to prevent them from getting on board. But as soon as that guy saw that we had, we didn't look anything, look, anything like the other crew and the other ship, uh, he went and he grabbed the mermaid. And they continued chasing this other galleon and eventually sunk them while we were working on another island and keeping an eye on them. And eventually we started to slowly work our way back uh, eastward towards Crow's Nest. And we ended up heading south to Devil's Ridge and just we, we did one quest there and we were watching a sloop kind of go from Crow's Nest to um, Crook's Hollow. And then eventually we kind of realized that they were kind of on a merchant quest, so they weren't even looking for us. But the end of the story was is we ended up getting the, the full loot. No one bothered us, and we managed to completely evade this pirate legend crew. So keep at it. If you get the key, run. Just run and do whatever you can to stay with the wind. Change different signs. Get as far away as you can and maybe try what we did. Maybe try changing all of your sail colors, all of your ship colors. Maybe change your clothing, you know. Do whatever you can to to kind of camouflage yourself. It's it's kind of like in GTA where you just kind of go and, <laughs> and jump, in a, jump in a shop, change the paint, and the cops leave you alone, right? So... That was that was a great adventure. I've had many like it throughout the week. And if you guys have a good story, let me know. I would love to hear it. I don't know if I'll always have time to share it on the podcast, but I still like hearing these stories because it's such a, a such a fun thing to to hear about. All right. So you've waited through it. You've listened to my story. We've talked about the patch. You guys want to know about the last item on today's docket. And we're going to be talking about the Hungering Deep trailer that aired Thursday during the Xbox or the Inside Xbox uh, video. Now, if you're like me, you're probably really happy because you found out that you, being subscribed with notifications on the Sea of Thieves YouTube channel, that they posted the video as soon as the Insider Xbox uh, show went up. So 
I didn't watch it. I watched the trailer about six or seven times, uh, just kind of checking out things. And I'm going to leave a link in the in the show notes if you want to watch it yourself. Definitely go do it because it's probably one of the most beautifully animated things I've seen using in-game engine for Sea of Thieves so far. I would love to see more like this, uh, especially in-game. I would like to see actual interactions with other, other people or other NPCs in the game. But apparently I missed like 30 minutes worth of escape room in a survival thing. I don't know. I'm glad I didn't watch it at that point. So anyway, here is the the quick little blurb that they put on the YouTube trailer. And I, and I actually really like this, so I'm going to read it verbatim. Do the sailors of the Sea of Thieves face a new threat or an ancient one? Hear the stories and steel yourselves for new challenges in the first content update for Rare's Shared World Pirate Adventure. Time to find out what hides in the hungering deep. Ooh, okay. That just gives me chills just thinking about it. So, all right. You guys watch the video. I watch the video. If you didn't pause, go watch the video. Seriously. And then come back. If, you, if you've if you already watched it, we're good. Let's talk about it. So, first thing, this was Merrick from the Killer Whale Shipwreck. And for some reason, he was down sitting at Shipwreck Cove. Uh, or Ship... Sh- I'm sorry, not Shipwreck Cove. Shark Bait Cove down in the ancient isles which is fitting because well we're talking about an ancient creature so we find merrick shipwrecked on sharkbait cove uh his i don't even know how he got down there but he is telling us this story about this ancient creature uh some some of the ancient people worshiped worshiped it as a god um, others just kind of knew it was a creature and while they had hunted sharks normally the they found out that this creature was not just a normal shark and we're pretty sure we're getting the megalodon merrick is telling us that they found a way to actually summon this creature and then offer it a sacrifice so that they continue sailing the seas peacefully and there's a lot going on in this video so i'm going to break it down just kind of on some of the main things that i noticed that i'm hoping we're actually going to be getting as a result of this content drop so if you didn't know, we're getting a megalodon or a leviathan or a giant shark shark creature. And there's a header on the Twitter and Facebook pages for Sea of Thieves that actually shows kind of a, a bird's eye view of a sloop uh, and a man sailing in, in the water away from some barrels. And there's just this giant uh, body in the water that you can see. So first of all, it has a body. That's good. Uh, second of all, holy cow this thing is huge um it's it's probably the size of a couple galleons uh i would say and and i'm and a lot of people are seeming to underestimate just how big this thing is i think this thing is kind of huge uh we got a chance to see some of it and the video kind of shows just just really long long creature coming up from the base it's very jaws-esque which i love uh because that was a, a movie that i grew up with that scared me to death about the ocean. So starting off with the, the beginning of the video, um, we, we see Merrick on the shore and we see a fiddler crab on the beach and it's just kind of going along. So I'm really hoping that, that this content uh, brings in fiddler crabs. Um, I'd love to see those added as just kind of a, another type of creature on in, in the world. Um, maybe not necessarily something that has to do with, uh, with the Merchant Alliance, but just adds more atmosphere. So I'd like to see that. Uh, Merrick himself is actually kind of sporting some shark bite scars and a uh, tattoo. So he has the shark jaws uh, tattooed um, around his, on his chest. And he actually has three fins uh, breaching the water tattooed across the back, uh, across his shoulder blades on his back. So we're definitely thinking that it's it's a very heavy shark themed uh, thing. Thanks to that, um, he has earrings now, which I think is awesome. I'm really hoping that that's introducing earrings as a cosmetic feature for pirates because big hooped earrings was definitely a cool kind of pirate aesthetic that I would like to see in there. And he actually had peg legs on both feet, which coming from a man that has giant scars of tattoo bites doesn't really surprise me, but it does offer the option of maybe adding peg legs for both feet since feet aren't necessarily something that, um, 
you need to function with, like with the guns. And I, I've had some debates online with this, which I know I shouldn't be getting in debates online with this, but some people have asked that you be able to switch hands for the hooks and eye patches. But it, it seems like one of those things that it would be it would be hard to do because they would actually have to go in and change animations and stuff. And it's it's I don't really see that happening. But peg legs is still something I can see actually happening. That wouldn't be too big of a change. So hopefully if you want double peg legs, you can be the pirate out there with double peg legs. Um, the next thing we saw was the the pictograph story that was animated, kind of depicting what was going on. It was kind of like uh, Maui's tattoos in uh, the movie I'm blanking on. You'll don't I'll, I'll remember it. Don't worry about it. But Moana, there we go. Uh, the, where his tattoos came came alive. The the cave drawings in the in the story that he that Merrick was telling us uh, was was animated, and it was really kind of cool to show the story of this ancient legend. But they had spears that they were throwing into the water to kill sharks, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting spears, uh, and we're we're going to be having to. We saw two ships sail in the the ones where they said basically that that they found out that they could summon the creature. We had two ships sail in, and two people or there were three people on these ships. Uh, the ships had little dashed markings on the ship, and I'm pretty sure that's the shark bait or not shark bait. I'm thinking of the island. The the shark teeth uh, liveries that we've seen in videos in the past where it's like got the, the little teeth marks, uh, along the front of the hull. I'm thinking that's what that was indicative of. Some people were saying it was number of cannons and that there were two spears in the top of the ship that they said were masts. So we're getting a two mast four gun. Sh no, no, we're, we're not going to, we're not getting a ship soon guys. Sorry to disappoint. It was looked like two spears stabbed in the top of the ship and it had uh shark teeth, uh, angles on the side so for the livery so I think we'll, we'll be hopefully be getting some shark teeth liveries sales uh, figurehead when with this this content drop and they use the spears and the musicians on the ship uh, had drums and what looked like a banjo or a fiddle uh, we do know that the fiddle's eventually coming. We don't know about drums, so drums might be a new addition to that. But we gathered that basically from this that people are going to need to actually work together. At least, I would say, three people per crew. So six people to summon the Megalodon, and you'll have to play a certain tune. So hopefully we're getting a new shanty uh, from that so we can be able to summon the Megalodon. And they said a sacrifice to pacify it. I don't think we're pacifying this thing. I think we're fighting it. So... Maybe the pacification is a uh, uh, throwing chickens overboard. I don't know. I don't. I don't think there's enough chickens and sea of thieves to to pacify a megalodon, in my opinion. Uh, maybe pirates. Maybe pirates. So hopefully, uh, we're. I'm right about this. I'm saying it right now. I'm drawing it in the uh, land. Uh, a line in the sand. Uh, new shanty coming. We're gonna need six people. We're getting a uh, horn of speaking to be able to contact other crews outside of cannonball range to see if they want to uh, partake of the megalodon summoning and uh, uh, earrings uh, and ship liveries uh, for for shark shark teeth stuff. Those those are my predictions. We're gonna find out anyway soon. It, it's it's uh, nine days from it, so March 29th is the release date. This week, this coming week, uh, probably Tuesday the 22nd, we're we're gonna be getting a patch. That patch is probably going to have uh, at least Merrick or or maybe Merrick's journal and people in or at least some sort of like teaser letting us know. Now, if you've been playing lately, you already know there's been a lot of sharks. There's been a lot of skeletons. There's some crazy stuff going on in the Sea of Thieves right now. It's a lot harder. To to go do regular missions now and i i don't know if that's because i'm higher in level or stuff is ramping up because of content or they they requested that things be or i requested things be harder when we're going out and they just listen to that but the one thing that i did want to address as i'm kind of wrapping this up for the night uh or for the day or whenever you're listening to this uh, my biggest concern is that the hungering deep content as exciting as this is doesn't seem to really cater itself well to people who prefer to be solo pirate legends. And this is this is kind of in, in thinking about to one of the videos they released about sailing uh, or, or getting or, you know, why is there a sloop in the game? And they said because they wanted to have something in there for people that wanted to have that solo adventure. Now, to release content that specifically requires additional players to be able to summon kind of counteracts that style of gameplay. It doesn't necessarily offer the 
solo player an opportunity to really participate in this if they want to be truly solo. They will always have to work with another player on their crew or at least another crew or both. So I feel bad that they're kind of counteracting or, or not really counteracting, but they're kind of going against that that idea of being a solo player. If that's what that person wants to do, they're going to miss out on this this uh, hungering deep content. So I'm hoping that maybe future contents will be a little more optimal for solo play, uh, but we'll have to see. I mean, we still don't really know. So a lot could change between now and the 29th when we actually get it. Uh, but expect this next coming Tuesday patch to contain a lot more teasers about what's going to be happening in the Hungering Deep as we get closer and closer to launch. So yeah, I think that's going to cover pretty much most of all the things that I noticed about the video. If there was something that I missed, please let me know. There's lots of ways you can do it. If you want to get a hold of me, feel free. I'm on Twitter, C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. Uh, I'm on Twitch. I stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and sometimes Saturdays, usually in the evenings on Pacific Coast time, usually around 6 or earlier if I can, just to try and help some of the East Coast players that want to sail with me. If you want to sail with me, feel free to do so. So my Twitch is twitch.tv slash C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. My gamer tag is C-A-P-T-A-I-N L-O-G-U-N. No space. It's just Captain Logan. I try to do Captain Logan for pretty much everything to make it easy for you guys. If you want to email me, feel free to do so. CaptLogan at gmail.com. C-A-P-T-L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. If you want to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts like Clail, Feel free to do so. I love seeing them. I love reading what you guys think. I really appreciate all the love and support I've gotten for this podcast. It's probably one of my favorite things going on right now. And I love meeting some of the people that listen to it and actually add me and join in on the Discord. I'll have links in the show notes. Don't worry. But join the Discord because I'm very active on there as well. And I love talking with people. Everyone's equal. Everyone loves the game. No one's really bashing it. We're all sharing news as soon as we find out about it to make sure that we all get to kind of stay up to date with that. So that's that's probably going to do it for this, guys. Thank you very much. I love you, and I can't wait to sail with you on the Sea of Thieves.